scripture today is very simple. It's Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Please pray with me. Lord, help us to know your voice. Help us, Lord, to know your presence. And Lord Jesus Christ, help us to know your word. We love you, Jesus. And help us to connect to you this morning. And may you change our lives through your word. Your servant Paul was taking dictation from you. And he says to us this morning, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Amen. Be with us, God, and guide us. Your name we pray. Amen. Story of the first Thanksgiving. I learned some things for the first time. Maybe I learned them but forgot them. But do uh, you know where the pilgrims, pilgrims were originally headed? They weren't headed towards New England. They were trying to get somewhere else. Do you know where they were headed? If you were at 8 o'clock, you can't, you can't participate right now. Do you know where they were headed? Shout it out. Virginia. Absolutely right. And there were two ships sailing from England. The Mayflower. And there was another ship. Do you know what that was called? Shirley Ferris got it. The Speedwell. But there was a problem. There was a problem with the Speedwell. And they stopped in Plymouth, England. 20 people got off, said it was a sign from God saying for them not to go. And 120 people piled on to the Mayflower and they were heading for Virginia, but got knocked off course and ended up delayed and off course and they landed in New England in November, which gave them a number of challenges. I learned something absolutely that I did not know. When they came to the first anniversary of their arriving in New England that first year, they wanted to have a day of focus. And there were two thoughts about the day of focus. One was, let's have a day of Thanksgiving. But some other people said, that's the last thing you want to do. You need to have a day of warning. We need to have a day of warning. We've lost so much. We've, uh, every one of us, we've lost members of our families. Each one's lost at least one. We need to have a day of mourning and we need to focus on what we've lost. But instead, you know what happened. The day of Thanksgiving, people won out. And historians say this, that perspective of having an attitude of thanksgiving, of rejoicing, would take these pilgrims far into the future. They were going to need that attitude of gratitude. You know that as people of faith in Jesus Christ, we're to be a thankful, rejoicing people. We're to be a thankful, rejoicing people. But you know, also sometimes in life, the people who are supposed to get some things, we don't always get it. It's, it's a challenge to be a thankful, rejoicing people. But you know, sometimes the people you expect to get it, they don't get it. You know that, that old song, you say tomato and I say tomato. You say potato and I say potato. Well, this is a true story that happened on Broadway. Somebody went, I think it's a true story, but somebody went to Broadway and was auditioning this song. So the lady sang, you say tomato and I say tomato. You say potato and I say potato. The, the director said, stop, stop from the top. Let's do it again. So she sang, 
You say tomato, and I say tomato. You say potato, and I say potato. The director said, that'll be all, Mrs. Levine. Don't call us, we'll call you. Well, Mrs. Levine looked at him and said, huh, people always do that. It's not Levine, it's Levine. <laughs> You think she would have gotten that in the song, huh? Well, God has made it clear that we're to be a thankful, rejoicing people. And we're to get that memo in our lives. It will change our lives when we do. It's a calling in our lives. Philippians 4:4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Always. Doesn't, we didn't say rejoice in the Lord sometimes. And again, I say rejoice. But sometimes we'd rather be in a sad situation. You know, I, this, the story was this little boy lost his pet goldfish. And the fish was just floating in the water. And he was all upset. So his mother called his dad. Said he's really, uh, Johnny's really up, upset about the, the goldfish. So the father called his son and said, when I get home from work, we're going to... We're going to go out, we're going to have ice cream with your friends, we're going to go out, we'll, we'll, have, a, we'll have a little party tonight because you lost the goldfish. So the dad comes home and says, well, let's bury the goldfish. He goes in the fish tank, and he goes to pick up the goldfish, and the goldfish starts swimming around. The little boy looked at his dad, you know, thinking of going out with his friend, says, Daddy, let's kill it. <laughs> Sometimes you'd rather stay in a sad situation. <laughs> rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. God is always at work. The verse right after this, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. The verse right after this is do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, Make a request to God, and the peace of God which passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. God is always at work. God. God is always at work. Actually, I advanced the point three, and I missed something here. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. The verse right after this is, let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. God is right nearby. God is always at work. This is an absolutely true story from the United States Senate. One day the chaplain didn't show up to say the invocation. They waited and waited. And finally, this is in the minutes. The Kirk will please read the journal. We will proceed without divine guidance. It's an absolutely true story. But no one objected. But the fact is, even when we want to proceed without divine guidance, God is ever near us and will see us through. And we can always call upon the Lord. That's where the do not worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, comes in. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. The coolest thing about rejoicing is that it puts us into a zone. It puts us into a zone. For St. Paul was on a roll here. He says to us, finally beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there's any things worthy of praise, think about these things. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Find something. Think on these things. Find something to rejoice about. A man in a wheelchair was paralyzed from the waist down. He would keep a journal and he would write about the forsythia blooming. He would write about the forsythia growing. He would write about things in his yard. Somebody said to him, what's up with that? Why do you do that? The man said, I just want to show God that I'm paying attention. 
the Lord calls us to pay attention. A minister once had a surgeon, noted surgeon, he was a big city preacher, he had a you know, a big, big surgeon in his congregation. He asked the surgeon one day, he said, is there ever been an operation that changed your life? The surgeon said, absolutely. He said, it was an eight-year-old girl who was brought into my operating room, and the little girl was so small and so skinny, you could hardly even see her under the, under the sheet. But I, as always is my custom, I went over to the patient before she was about to be put under under anesthesia. And I and I said to her, uh, you know, how you doing? And she said, well, before I always go to sleep, I say a prayer. Can I say a prayer? And the surgeon, who was really going through a rough time in his life, said to the little girl, yeah, would you say a prayer? Would you pray for me too? And the little girl just said, Lord, I'm about to go to sleep. Would you look upon your little lambs who are having a tough time right now? And then the girl went to sleep. It, the surgeon said that it so touched him that he, he, he got emotional. But then he realized, I've got to operate on this child. He got it together. He operated on the child. And the operation was a success. And he said, that's not why it changed my life. He said, that little girl calling upon the Lord, he said, with all my training and everything I had, I realized how much I needed God. And from that point in my life, I started really walking with the Lord. And the Lord gave me help. Oh, bless Jesus. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. The man in the wheelchair just saying, I just want the Lord to know I'm paying attention. Lonzo Green. I never heard of him before, but he was a country music singer. And uh, he was famous down south. He was visiting his nephew in Tennessee one day. And uh, Uncle Lonzo, I got this buddy of mine. There was like 10 years, his nephew was like 10 years old. I got this buddy of mine who, he knows you're coming to see me. And he wants to know if you tune his guitar. Help him to show him how to tune his own guitar. Uncle Lonzo said, sure. So they said, just check it out with your mom and dad. And they told them this boy's name, told him what they wanted to do. And his parents said, there's no way that kid is going to be allowed in this house. He's, he's from a section of town we call it white trash. He said, I'm not letting that white trash in this house. And, and so the boy said to Uncle Lonzo, come on, he's a really cool kid. Uncle Lonzo said, let me work on your parents. His parents said, no way, that kid's not coming in the house. So Uncle Lonzo said, okay, I'll meet him out in front of the house. And there on the sidewalk, Uncle Lonzo met this kid, showed him how to tune his guitar. The kid said, thanks, said, I'm, I'm going to be on my way. Uncle Lonzo said, no, man, no, no, let's, let's play a few tunes together. And there on the sidewalk in front of the house, they, they played some, some country songs together. And it was very touching. And then the boy said, about dinner time, my mom's expecting me. I don't want to disappoint my mom. I told her I'd be home at dinner, and so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to head home. Well... There's an interesting rest of the story to that story because uh, that kid was welcomed into many more homes in the United States of America, sold a few records too. His name was Elvis Presley. And Elvis Presley would say often through his career that he learned generosity and grace from a country singer named Lonzo Green. You never know what God is doing. Back in 1754, a writer by the name of Horace uh, Walpole, uh, English scholar, he coined a word, a word called serendipity. 
That's an old uh, Arabic, it's an Arabic legend about the three princes of Serendip. Serendip is the Arabic word for Ceylon, we now call it Sri Lanka. Yesterday I was with a friend who's from Sri Lanka. That's his original place. And it's a story of three princes who head for Serendip, but they never make it there. But on the way, they get blessed by a number of things that happen to them. That's where we get the word serendipity, which means finding valuable or remarkable things not sought for. Surprising things that happen in life. On my shelf, in my bookshelf, I take it down off, and I have something called the Serendipity Bible. Written by a man named Lyman Coleman, who specializes in helping small groups. Throughout the Bible, there's just a margin just full of questions. Serendipitous things, surprise blessings happen when we walk with the Lord. Especially when we walk with the Lord in gratitude. He blesses us in many ways along the way. What about the writer? What about the writer of this letter to the Philippians? His name was Paul. He was a Jewish convert. He was in prison when he wrote this letter. We read more about St. Paul. He was beaten many times. And he tells us, that he's proud of, that he's on the right team. He's on the team of Jesus Christ. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. The Lord is at work. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving. Make your requests known to God, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think about these things. A word for the Lord for us on this Thanksgiving Sunday. Think about these things. You, if you want to walk with God, think about His blessings. At a, another uh, church on their marquee, might be on our marquee soon, I, I loved it. I, I, I saw it said this. Will you be thankful? Or just full. The choice is ours. And it's more than just a little thing on Thanksgiving Day. It's about whether you're going to be a winner or not in the kingdom of God. If you want to be a winner in the kingdom of God, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to be a part of the kingdom of God of God. Take our sin from us, Lord, and give us yourself. Help us to walk in the way that leads to life. Help us to know your voice, Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to know your presence. And help us to know your word. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We thank you because you are always up to something, Lord. Help us to tune into it. Your name we pray and all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Let us stand together.